Ooh, what's up guys and welcome to our last team analysis against our opponent this time it is actually TPU final beyond course poker trip so a big game going down against the Dallas Staravia and um, I'm gonna show you the sets that are changed because we're cha actually keeping pretty much the same sets I had previous one if you want to see the other sets um, make sure to see that link down below I'm gonna show you two Pokemon that are unique for this battle and uh, also not Take the time to thank Ellis and Rob for being incredible partners in this season. Uh, you guys have been the best and you've definitely given me some good sets, given me some good juggle spots basically. And uh, without you guys this would not have been possible. And also thank you to Sinon and Anima uh, for also being so supportive, uh, being of course in the previous season and they've actually been helping me out too. Uh, so thank you guys for doing that and uh, basically let's get to it. So our first unique mon I guess you should say is Heracross. Now he was a part of that game previously but it's a bit more unique this time. Uh, the main focus on Heracross this time is to, um, or rather I had a scarf set uh, previous time and it didn't really work as well as I was hoping for. It did do a lot of force out but it didn't really hit hard enough and since excluding Empoleon of this game, yes Empoleon is not going to be a part of this game, I need something to not be uh, walled out by Florias for example. And we go for Moxie uh, trying to snag a few KOs. We are just about fast enough for everything outside, of course, the 100 base mounts that is forcing us out. We're going for Admin because there is really no reason else for doing so. We're faster than Flo just in the beginning with. Uh, we use the Natural Gift with the Pitaya Berry, which is 100 base power. Um, it is a pretty much a 70% hit uh, on um, Florius if it decides to bring it, if it is a defensive set, that is. And uh, yeah, Rock Tomb is there basically as filler. Uh, it's mostly for um, Dragonite anyway, if it tries to set up against the Heracross, which I feel are uh, a possibility. And so at least he, he gets stronger, yes, but he doesn't get any kind of speed boost. He doesn't aren't faster than me, which is in the end the most important part. Because um, that means that once I lose Heracross, I can bring Gengar and it just wrap things up with him. Um, and the reason, like I said, I don't have um, Gusty Simon is because it all boils down to that it has nothing that could potentially make me, um, oh, how do you say, he has really no status hitters, uh, I mean Florius could Toxic and stuff like that, but it would be kind of dumb for him for going for Toxic against Aerocross with Moonblast does as much as it does. So hopefully I can bluff up potential Scarf in the beginning, um, with of course snagging um, <laughs> a moxie boost and then afterwards just trying to take on the Florius uh, cleanly. If I have a plus one then I can actually Oko Florius from the get go. So Heracross is a mod that's gonna die this game definitely but uh, not without giving away its gimmick which I hope will serve uh, to be important for this specific match. And the last one of course out of these two is Alakazam. I didn't have Alakazam in the previous game and it proved to be not difficult, but at the same time, I didn't want to uh, bench full Corona. That was actually an issue. Um, first of all, it's, it has to be said that Focus Sash would have been probably more helpful for this game, but it all boils down to that I really need to hit hard. And with Life Orb, I can actually guarantee an Oko on both Scissor and uh, his Mega Medishan for this game. Uh, which in all in all is most important. Celebi can't necessarily do anything to Alakazam and I can set up Call Mines against it and with HP Fire I should be able to hit that thing quite hard. Um, so Call Mine is basically filler. It is to set up against the likes of Florgius and of course set up against potential Celebi and um, with one Call Mine I should be in a very good area of actually KOing most of his team and uh, I am faster than everything his team if he's in Scarf. Um, I only are fast enough to beat his Raichu which, all in all, is the most important part of this game. I need to be the fastest one of the team. I felt that that was an issue uh, in the previous game, basically, because I knew that I didn't have... Um, or the speed tiers I had was enough, but it had mods that could outspeed most of my team anyway. Uh, this time, I actually bring up, do believe, three mods that could actually cope with his speed, his max speed tier, which means I'm forcing him to be um, Scarf if he wants to beat them, which I feel are not really a big deal for him. That would... or it would be hard for him for doing that properly. Uh, so yeah, Dazzling Gleam fills the void side shock for his Snorlax, which in the end will be annoying to deal with. Um, a fake out bullet punch combo from Medisham 
does not take out this Alakazam, should be noted. Uh, we have enough speed to survive that, and that's really all we want. We want to be able to survive that onslaught and retaliate back on. And uh, yeah, just overall, I think Alakazam could be an immensely powerhouse for this specific match. And uh, yeah, that pretty much is the size of it, and here of course is the whole team. Uh, also should be noted, I try my very best to make this picture good. Uh, it didn't. <laughs> I really want to include this whole team there. This whole team is Dragonite, Arcanine, Wobbuffet, Snorlax, Breloom, Raichu, uh, Sisoflodia, Silvi, and Mega Medicham. And uh, Thunders are the general set with uh, Life Orb, Focus Blast, um, Thunderbolt, and uh, I believe Hidden Power Ice. Uh, with T-Wave this time, in case he tries to set up with his Dragonite. Uh, Landris has a Stealth Rush now that Napoleon is not a part of the team. Uh, nothing big to it, it is quite offensive with Joshua Berry to be able to deal with Medisham. Uh, all I need to worry about when it comes to that is that it doesn't crit me. I mean, that, that's a thing. Like, that, that that's gonna be a game changer. <laughs> uh, Drapion with Toxic Spike this time again. Now, I do expect his... Uh, um, sorry. His uh, Snorlax to be of immunity this time, which could be fine. Uh, I'm going to hope that I can pull off a knockoff on it, that's about it. And Gengar is the last one with uh, some defensive estimate, much like the last time. Uh, so I do believe Sludge Bomb, Shadow Ball, uh, Ice, no Focus Blast for uh, and Taunt. So basically the general idea is to uh, actually take him on. At, and take him on properly, to be honest. Um, really no biggie to it. I, I really want to win this matchup. And I want to win it properly, and I think this is the way to do it for me. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's it. Uh, I am... I, like, he won previous time because he had a bit of luck, but also the team he constructed was good for my team. And uh, me bringing the same kind of idea again might be risky, but at the same time, I know that I just have to win the, the turns that matters. And uh, the way I played last time was the right cause, but it just... I didn't hit the moves I needed to, and sometimes that sucks, but you know, that's the game. So all I need is time to over something close to this game again. And uh, the only way I can do that is by bringing pretty much the same team again. And uh, the changes of twerks, or tweaks, twerks, the tweaks that are made for this game are hopefully enough to, uh, to, yeah, to be pulled off properly. Now obviously when this analysis is going up, uh, the battle has already been done, and it is live on the TBU channel. Uh, so if you guys want to see the live commentary from then, then you know, check it out. If you want to see my comment on it, then you're going to see it tomorrow. I do believe that's Sunday. And I do believe I'm going to make a post comment this time. Um, we'll see. Yeah. I am really anticipating this game. I've uh, been holding out for making this video for a while. And uh, I'm not too scared. Um, I like my opponent's team, and I like my opponent also. I think Poker Trip is a very, very good person, so I won't really, um, I won't mind the loss too much. I really won't. Of course, it would be nice to get a title for once. I mean, this is my second uh, finale in a in a league, uh, two out of two, basically, which is great. But I really need to win this one, don't I? And uh, I have to win it against an opponent that has beaten me before, which defensive playstyle, which is great. That's that, that was what is needed to do to beat me, and it actually works. So, yeah, if you can pull that off again, then, you know, it's going to be hella scary. Um, and, of course, the only thing different this time is that I have an option of Alga Sam this time and not Cobalion. So, uh, yeah, I wonder how scary it could be about that. Uh, Alga Sam is definitely a powerhouse against him. You know, I I'll just hope for the best, really. I'm, I'm feeling that this is going to be a great battle. And I have no doubt that a winner between us two is uh, going to be just as modest when it comes through, you know, winning or losing. I mean, we both are... We've, we've done one hell of a trip. Haha. <laughs> Inside joke for Poké Trip there. And uh, in all honesty, you know, it's just great as us two in the, in the end. Uh, I think that's the right player coming from uh, the Johto side. And I think, uh, I think I am the right one from Kanto. And I think it is this opposite. I think I am Johto and he's Kanto, so whatever. But, uh, yeah, I mean, if I wasn't here, then Eric would have been here, and it would have been just as good. So, really, um, to um, Poker Trip, you know, good luck, have fun, and uh, may the best battler win TBU Season 2. And to everybody else who's been watching, thank you for doing just so. 
and I see you in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye.